lesbian dinner. Today we are going to be talking about what some may refer to as a lesbian tinder, as I am a lesbian and I go on lesbian tinder. I've been a little bit of a tinder addict lately because I just came from a small little town where there is nothing and nobody and now I'm in a big city. I'm just like, cuties, cuties everywhere. You just go on the phone and you have you know, instant access to, you know, thousands of cuties within the area, and it's fantastic. I can't get enough of it. So I thought I would just make a video talking about my experiences on Lesbian Dender. They might not be your experiences, they might not be your friend's experiences, they might not be anybody's experiences, but they're my experiences. Bios are important. Like, there's some people without bios at all. I'm like, you know, like, I get that, like, sometimes the photos can have, you know, your interests kind of involved in them. Like, there might be a photo of you painting a picture, there might be a photo of you taking photos, there might be a photo of you skiing, which personally, I don't like the skiing pictures because, one, I really, really do not like skiing, and two, half the time you wear a blob in a snowsuit on top of a hill, it's like, I have no idea what you look like, this does not help me at all, but, you know, I don't know you like skiing now, so, you know, that's cool, I guess, but, yeah. Other times, you know, there might not be a bio and it's just a picture of your ass, I'm like, well, now I know you like your ass, so, you know, good for you, you know, um, for being appreciative of yourself. Um, doesn't, you know, tell me to a hell of a lot. Well, I guess it, you know, I know they have a good ass. Which, you know, might be good to know, depending on what I'm looking for. There have definitely been times where I was like, I'm sure about a girl, she's kind of cute, and I looked at her bio and I was like, nope not going there. You know, just some, like, dumb thing in their bio. I'm like, eh, er, so close. Your personality just didn't cut it. Um, no, that, that does seem harsh because I understand Tinder bios are hard. You can't make them too long. You know, you, you gotta put something there. Uh, yeah, because like, I find long ones can be a little dorky, but at the same time, you know, well, like, what do you do? And then it's, like, hard to respond on Tinder because, you know, you get very limited information about this person. And, you know, so it's like, what do I say? I hear many complaints about the words hi and you can't say hi to me or else I'm not gonna talk to you back because that's boring as fuck. Which I get. Hi is pretty boring. But, you know, with the high umbrella, they're also including hello, hey, howdy, like, all these, you know, I guess generic responses. And it just seems like, I know it's a little harsh, like, I understand where they're coming from, but it just seems a little harsh because, you know, it's hard to just make the first move, especially with lesbians. Oh my god, there's this thing called lesbian stalemate, where neither girl knows if she should respond first, and half the time no one ends up responding to anybody, and it's it's a bummer. But I yeah, usually I take the plunge and respond, you know, just be like, hey, how you doing? Like your style, like your pics. Yeah, it's hard to know what the response was. And frankly, if you don't have a bio and you're disappointed by getting the word hi sent to you, like I don't know what to say, like. You're kind of like limiting your options here, you know? You're not giving a lot for these people to go off of. And I know, maybe it's just me, but it seems like if this was like real life back in 1975 or something, and you found somebody like in real life, just on the fly, who is attractive and they were attracted to you back and they went up to you and say hi that is movie magic baby that is like something that never ever happens and that's like this big wonderful thing though we're so used to this instant gratification if it happens via tinder or via the internet like hi isn't good enough for me 
Like, I don't know what you're expecting. What kind of magical, awesome, you know, thing, message, response, whatever you're expecting. If you have like any like Tinder openers that like work for you, or if you like have any ideas or know what you like to hear on Tinder, that you like the opening statements and good opening statements, go down in the comments and tell me and tell like everybody else so we know, so we can crack the code. Yeah, one thing I've noticed is asking how your week is, is not a very, you know, successful response. It doesn't get a lot of replies. Sometimes it does. You know, it's, it's kind of a, a little dicey, I find. Which, you know, again, it's hard because, like, there's only so many things you can ask. And, you know, that one's, that's pretty good, I thought. But then I was starting to think, I'm like, we live in a pretty depressed generation. You know, maybe asking how someone's week is, is not a good idea. It might be like, Gee, how was my week? Well, I cried myself to sleep, I woke up, which was very disappointing, and I went to work, which made me want to kill myself even more, and then I went home, and I ate a bag of chips to, you know, hopefully distract from the pain that's going inside me, which it didn't really, and then I cried again, I watched The Office, and then I went to sleep. So yeah, that was my week, that was my day. Thanks for asking, please don't talk to me ever again. <laughs> so yeah, but honestly if that was your week then like, you know, I, I get that. You know, I was, you know, depressed once too, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good now. But for most of my life I was a sado persano. Um, so yeah, just if, like, honestly, if you match with me on Tinder and you had yourself a shitty week, you know, you got something bad happened, you got a zit, you stubbed your toe, someone died, you know, you just straight up tell me. I have actually found Tinder to be quite a confidence booster, despite, you know, the bumps in the road, um, the people who unmatch you don't talk to you, you don't match with, and you wonder like, why didn't I match with them? You know, they're cute and you just never match with them, and then you realize that just because I'm not good looking enough and it doesn't matter how many times I change up my photos or what I put in my bio, I'm just not hot enough for that person, I'm just not at their league, or maybe I'm just not their type, not that I'm not hot, they're just looking for someone, you know, tall, with long hair, who wears a backwards baseball cap, and who plays softball, and I'm none of those things, so it would just never work out. It's just never meant to be. But that's okay, because not everybody's gonna be perfect for everybody, you know? Anyways, despite the bumps in the road, things have been, you know, pretty good with the Tinder. Tinder has been a good experience for me. Partly because it made me realize I'm not ugly. Maybe I'm not attractive enough for some people. But I'm not ugly. I thought I was like an uggo for a long time based on how I was treated in grade school by boys, which was uh, shitty. Uh, yeah, and it was not because they liked me. It was because I was weird, creepy, and had wonky teeth. So, well, maybe they might have liked me, but I, I can't ask them. Well, I could because there's Facebook, but like, I'm not gonna do that. So, I guess we'll never know for sure. But yeah, that like definitely, you know, lowered the confidence. But you know, summer of 2015, my braces just came off. I just came out as a lesbian. I hit the city for a whole month and I was ready to go on the Tinder. Also, I was just excited to, you know, get my gay on. So I went on the Tinder and I was getting some hot matches. I was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, I guess I'm not ugly. Yay. So that's cool. I'm not ugly, yeah. Um, one thing I do miss from 2015 Tinder, bless your soul, was Tinder Moments. I'm not sure if any of you remember Tinder Moments. It was basically like a Snapchat ripoff, and it was wonderful. 
because what would happen is if you had like a cute match sitting there, she, you know, wasn't responding super fast, taking her sweet little time, all you would do is post something sexy to your Tinder stories and wha bam, she would get back to you lickety split. It was fantastic. But you wouldn't put anything like, you know, blatantly sexy, like not just straight up your lingerie, but you know, picture of you in a bathing suit be like going to the beach or you know picture of you in a crop top that makes your boobs look really good and be like hot day and you put like the you know whatever the temperature on y you get what I mean but no they got rid of that like they have okay tinder has so many like weird little features that come like in and out of the app and none of them are useful for anything at all and that one was, and they got rid of it. And I still pine for the tender moments, but they'll probably never come back. I thought that Snapchat maybe like sued them or something, but then I noticed Instagram has their story, so I don't know. Speaking of Instagram, uh, you can connect Instagram to Tinder. I never used to do this, and I decided to give it a whirl because, you know, they can look at my, uh, you know, Instagram and find out them artsy fartsy and cool. I don't know, but I connected it when my feed was like a little mean and I'm like, I don't know if I wanted to connect it, you know, maybe I just want my profile to, you know, my pictures to speak for itself, you know, so I tried to disconnect it and it won't let me. Um, I pressed the disconnect, it just goes to my Instagram page and then I sign in and it says, sorry, you know, Instagram profile, I reconnected to Tinder. I'm like, I don't want to sign it, I, I want to disconnect. Why won't you let me disconnect? And then I came to the realization that my Tinder matches will be able to find my, this, you know, what some may consider embarrassing YouTube channel. I'm like, cool. And I can't disconnect it. So, uh, yeah, um, that's a thing. Well, maybe, you know, it's all for the best because maybe I can find like the one and the one will love me regardless of my embarrassing YouTube channel. Hell, they would may even love my embarrassing YouTube channel. But, you know, ideally, you want to, like, ease your significant other into the idea that you have an embarrassing YouTube channel, you know? Like, maybe it's, like, month three, month four into the relationship, it gets casually brought up. I don't know, you have a YouTube channel, and then they find out, and they can't break up with you because of it, because they're already in too far, and, ah, uh, yes, classic. But, you know, maybe my matches will just find this channel and be immediately unattracted to me because of it. And, you know, it could be good because then maybe they'll show their friends and be like, Hey, look at this freaky girl's YouTube channel. I found her on Tinder. You know, she talks about her previous mental breakdowns. And it's, you know, yeah. And they can all laugh at me, which could spike me to YouTube popularity. So, woo! And also, like, I followed a whole bunch of people like Instagrams because I never used to do them like that is a little weird you know I shouldn't do that but then I was like you know they have it there for a reason maybe that's what you're supposed to do maybe that's what they want you to do you know I want followers they want followers you know we could cut ourselves a deal deal here you know plus I'm into like supporting local cuties okay there's a while there especially when I first got Instagram where I was like friend of a friend of a friend I'm gonna support you because you're a friend of a friend of a friend. You are considered in the uh, local cutie category and my mission is to support local cuties because if you're a friend of, of my friend, then you're, you know, my friend. Well, not actually my friend because you don't know me. But I'm gonna support you because, you know, life can be hard. And it's good to support each other, you know, be like, you have a nice face, you know, you're talented, you're wonderful, you're beautiful and special, and I just want you to know that. Anyway, so that's why I follow like 16,000 people on Tinder. It used to, not on Tinder, but on Instagram, it used to be like 3,000. I'm like, yeah, I need to edit this because with the new algorithm, I don't even see half these people. I feel like some of, there's definitely people that come up on my feed every once in a while. I'm like, why did, how did I end up following you? I am following them. But yeah, so yeah, I follow a lot of people. And so then I followed all these people and I'm like, they're definitely gonna find my YouTube channel now because um, it's in my bio, but I could just, you know, get out of my bio. But like, I promote my YouTube channel shamelessly on social media and that, it can't change now because I've already been doing it for so long. It'd be sadder 
if I stopped doing that, because yeah, so now it's like, oh, gets no like my my posts on my new YouTube videos get no likes on Facebook anymore. But you know, I'm stuck. I'm a slave to the tube. I can't stop out me. But no, I actually like making these YouTube videos, and you know, it's just you know it's how how it goes. You know, it's just how it goes. I'm getting off topic. But yeah, connecting Instagram to Tinder. Sometimes it can be good because you can get more like information about somebody. And then there's also Spotify you can connect to. I've not connected my Spotify. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I don't know. But there's been, you know, it's helpful for me to find like out what their music taste is because you know I like music. You know, it's good to find out if your match has good music taste. And if they do have like an artist in there that you like, that's like a good, you know, you can cling on to that for like a conversation start. Be like, I like that artist too. Ew. But yeah, I wish there was a better way for lesbians to uh, to meet because honestly, like, you can't really uh, meet lesbians in real life anymore. Well, you can, but it's very rare because one. You can't know for sure if they're a lesbian. I don't know how these gay guys all know who's gay and who's not. Like, I don't know, maybe it's like you just find someone that's a little fruity and just kind of, you know, hope for the best. Like, I don't know. With girls, it's like, you don't just find someone who's extremely butch and be like, hello. If you do get a lesbian vibe from somebody, like, sometimes they might not be into being flirted with. Um, you know, they might be offended that you're profiling them, assuming they're a lesbian, just based off how they dress. Personally, I'd be flattered because everybody thinks I'm straight and like, I'm trying so hard, you know? I'm wearing the stuff from the boys section of the Gap. I have a pair of Doc Martens, my hair is cut short. Like, come on. Like, honestly, it'd be like my dream for some like homophobic person to just yell dyke at me from across the street. Unless there's like some physical confrontation that comes with that, then please no. But if it's just like, you know, word stuff, I'd be like, I look like a lesbian today, which means I look cool and hip and fresh and tough and happening. Yeah. You know, you can't really find a gay person in a gay bar anymore. Well, you can, but filled with straight people, <coughs> which I have mixed feelings about because on one hand, it makes it so you, I can't really find lesbians hit on there if I wanted to because everyone would be a straight girl who's going there with their boyfriend to see the drag show but on the other hand it shows that people are becoming more accepting because before they didn't go to you know gay bars because they were too ashamed to be associated with us and um now they're comfortable with being around us and it's showing that we don't need segregated spaces anymore and we're all accepting of one another but you know Having a place, you know, to meet other people that are, like, gay is pretty good, sounds good. So, like, I don't know. I get a lot of, um, you know, complaints with Tinder about the straight infiltrating Tinder. You'll see, you know, straight girls being, like, looking for a friend, feeling lonely, new in the city, please help me. And I'm like, honestly, if I was straight, I'd probably do that, too, because I don't have any friends. I'm lonely. <laughs> Aren't we all? Um, like I was talking about earlier in a different video, it's hard to make friends in the 21st century, you know? It's hard to make friends in any century, especially the 21st century shit. So, I don't blame them. And there's people being like, You shouldn't be here, me. You shouldn't be on lesbian Tinder, me. I'm like, well, you can always just swipe left. Like, I understand what the big deal is. But, you know, I, I, I get it, but at the same time, no. Honestly, if there's a girl looking for friends on Tinder and she looks like halfway cool, and I'd be like, you know, why not? I'm looking for friends, you're looking for friends, I'll be your friend. You know? I don't know. Honestly, there should be a better thing for making friends. I guess there's a Bumble, which... I don't like Bumble. I had Bumble for like a couple days. I'm like, Bumble ain't for me because it has this thing where you have to respond to the person within 24 hours if there's a match, which just seems dumb to me because I don't have Bumble with me all the time. You know, I don't, I don't have a, you know, data plan. I'm out. I'm doing things. I might not be able to respond within 24 hours. Like, are you kidding me? And 
Like it's supposed to spark conversation, but I, I don't know. And then I think with like straight people, it's like the girl has to respond first, and the guy can't. I don't know how it works, but I was getting no match. It's like it was dead. Well, I guess I'm only out for a day. Well, it was a little longer than the day. It was definitely longer than the day. But yeah, dead. And um, maybe I don't know. I just deleted it off my phone. They should have uninstalled it first. But I was like, I'm done. Goodbye. So that was gone off my phone. So I guess my profile is floating around in Bumble. Like a girl thing, I guess. You can only meet other girls, mostly straight girls. I'm like, okay, I'm good with straight girlfriends. Mostly, like, do, can guys use this feature to find other guy friends? Is this, like, open to, like, everybody? Queer people, trans people, gay people? Like, like, yeah, I know. Like, and I wish I had, like, in more, like, open to meet, like, all sorts of types of people of all sorts of genders, I guess, but, you know, whatever. So, yeah. I still get emails from them being like, your date tonight on us from Bumble. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Thanks. And you get people like, way on the opposite of the spectrum, where they, you know, they just want sex. It's hard to really know, though, who wants sex and who doesn't on lesbian tinder because they don't say in the bios which i understand because it's kind of lame just saying hi looking for sex because also you might be wanting to look for like genuine relationships too but you also might be like a little interested in sex like you can't do both at the same time which is yeah um so it's hard to really know who's really looking for it like usually again with the whole like you know, with the whole showing your ass and not having a bio thing, maybe you can infer, but you can't tell for sure. You can't, like, I feel like it's, some may think I'm being a little, but like, it might, it just to assume by how they're dressing and stuff that they're looking for sex. It's just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, so, and you get, you know, the, the couples and people complain about the couples. I'm like, they're just trying to spice their life. You know, they're just trying to do their thing. They just want a third. You know, just let them. I, 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 I wish them the best. I wish them the best. Um, rarely you ever get like a a lesbian couple looking for a third. That's a rarity. But I actually found one once. Um, it was just the profile just showed a girl, and there was a picture with her and the other with another girl, but just like very casually. I thought maybe she was like her sister or a buddy. It was like the last photo. And you know, I match with her, and then she's like, Hey, me and the last girl want, you know, another girl, we're a couple, woo! But it's funny because her bio said, no couples, so I'm like, okay, whatever. A little hypocritical, I guess, but you know. So I guess there's already enough of you, you don't want. Yeah. Um. And then before I could even respond, she unmatched me, I'm like, cool. Okay, show. Um, good luck on your adventure. Personally, I think there should just be Girl Grinder. Just call Girl Grinder the same thing as Grinder, but for girls, all the couples, all the people wanting casual sex can go over there. Because I don't know, there's a lot of like casual sex kind of shaming on lesbian Tinder. Maybe on other Tinders there are too. But I, I've just noticed it, especially in good old 2015, you'd see somebody post, if you ask me for casual sex, I'm gonna, you know, kill you. Eh. I'm like, geez, that's a little harsh. Like, I don't think you're actually gonna kill me, but if I ask you for casual sex. But I know, I just feel like it's kind of harsh because some people want to be intimate with somebody and they might not be ready for the commitment of a relationship or sometimes just in between them finding a relationship and this period, they just want something a little, a little woo in their life. Some, a lot of people say it's a dating website, not a casual sex, which I, honestly, I thought it was a casual sex for like a long time and yeah like everybody else has casual sex apps the gays definitely do the straights i haven't looked into whether the straights have them because frankly i never really cared it was never really relevant to me they probably do just the lesbians lesbians get nothing all we have is the l in front of lgbt that's it and even that people want to take away so mm. if you have any interesting tinder experiences or, you know, experiences being a lesbian on Tinder, or, you know, gay guy on Tinder, straight on Tinder, whatever. You can comment them down below with, you know, good pickup lines, whatever. Just, yeah, just comment away. Like, thumbs up, share to your friends, subscribe! And yeah, hope you have a good day. Get a lot of matches, go on a lot of dates, and just have yourself a good week.
Right. Bye-bye.